to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, we're all present. Approve agenda for Wednesday, August 15th. I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda as written. Second that. Oh, my apologies. I had that, uh, the date on the agenda was wrong. It's for tonight, September 11th. My mistake. July 11th. I got a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All in favor, sing by saying aye. 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 All the same sign, passed with all present. Item number five, conditional use permit for Buell Consulting and Tricon County Properties for a 150 foot monopole tower. Mr. Chair, we're not going to approve the minutes. Sorry about that. Minutes for July 11th. Any changes or? I'll okay. make a motion we approve the minutes as written. I'll second that. We got a motion and a second to approve the minutes from <coughs> July, 11th. July 11th. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Pass with all present. Now item five, conditional use permit. <laughs> I'll lead with the, uh, the staff report here. Um, as Chair Jansky noted, this request has been submitted uh, in coordination between Buell Consulting Inc, um, who work with the telecommunications side and uh, as a developer consultant and Tri-County Properties, the uh, property owner at 633 Prosper Drive uh, this is a I-1 light industrial district property um, in those areas, um, cell towers or monopole towers are considered a uh, conditional use. I'll toggle over to the, um, the screen here and some exhibits up. Uh, this is on screen, we have a general location <coughs> map of the, the property again at 633 Prosper Drive. Um, most easily referenced adjacent to the uh, the new public works facility in 17th Avenue. There is a, a point of reference and uh, to the north of uh, 7th Street Cells, uh, County Road 137. The actual uh, tower facility is proposed to be in the southwest corner of the property. You can see that um, proposed location on the screen noted here. Uh, as you may recall, Planning Commission members, we actually reviewed a uh, ordinance amendment request earlier this year, uh, this summer, that allows for some flexibility within the ordinance uh, in regards to setbacks for um, monopole tower facilities. We see a handful around the city and um, essentially we worked with um, some of the property owners and requests that were finding difficulties in placing them in areas that we that we want them to be in as far as limiting them to uh, industrial properties and ag rural residential properties but but not at the same time not um, precluding the owners from uh, maximizing the development on their property they were working with property owners and um, the way our setbacks requirements were with the fall zones that were required being a um, higher than the height of the tower um, it was basically in the way for a lot of properties we did recommend approval of that request um, and that will be going to the uh, city council next Monday the 17th concurrent with with this request so um, they are going at the same time and this this request is the first iteration of a of a tower that would utilize that fall zone aspect um, Essentially, the, the, the tower um, is designed to 
fold over onto itself in the event of a catastrophic failure within a 50 foot radius rather than um, tipping straight over and the applicants have submitted engineering detail and um, a statement from a, a, a professional engineer that that attests to that fact uh, we have reviewed this request and, and do believe that it uh, follows the standards of, of ordinance 55 uh, this tower is um, nearly half mile away from the nearest existing tower, which does exceed the, the one quarter mile minimum. <coughs> um, part of the advantage, uh, if you want to call it that, of, of allowing a little bit higher taller uh, tower with the reduction in the setback requirement is that we, we may see a <coughs> little bit of a reduction in the overall number of towers over time. Uh, not that we'll have a ton of them, but uh, we may see perhaps one less in, in over time this by having them a little bit taller. Um, the proposed placement in the southwest corner uh, does uh, largely shield f visibility of the base facility uh, and the equipment from um, the adjacent roadways. We do require a eight to 10 foot fence uh, by ordinance around the, the base tower. Uh, my recommendation would be that we either have that be a uh, either a solid wood or um, uh, vinyl type fence or, or have it be uh, the allowance for the typical chain link security fencing but require some up to landscaping um, just due to the location adjacent to the public works facility and the visibility from the public on, on that side. I guess I'm, I'm open to uh, the landscaping aspect with the, with the um, applicants as to which way they want to go on that. I can understand where they may want to be able to see the interior there to see if there's anything wrong or um, anyone in there. But um, basically I, my recommendation would be to allow some discretion that, that we come to a, an agreed upon plan with myself and um, prior to the, the building permit being issued. Uh, as of yesterday, um, at the time of the report writing, I hadn't received any comments over the location and that carries over to today as well. I've not seen uh, any comments submitted either for or against the, the facility. It uh, seems pretty straightforward as far as a, a monopole cell tower facility. So um, I, I'll leave it open for any questions and I know the, the applicants are here as well if there's any questions um, either from the public or from plan commissioners that they may be able to address a little bit better. Uh, my recommendation would be for approval of the conditional use permit to allow for the 150-foot uh, tower uh, at 633 Prosper Drive with the following conditions. Uh, number one, building and electrical permits are required prior to commencement of construction or installation. Plans and specs shall adhere to those as reviewed, approved by Planning Commission and or City Council. <coughs> Variations from approved plans or specifications may require additional approval from Planning Commission uh, and or City Council. Uh, number two, exterior fencing surrounding the tower base shall either be of <coughs> opaque materials, uh, either wood, vinyl composite, or other materials as approved by Planning and Community Development Director and between eight and 10 feet in height. Uh, as an alternative, if chain link fence is desired, a landscaping plan must be furnished for review and approval um, of planning community development director and implemented as approved. Uh, lastly, number three, in event of a catastrophic failure which results in fall or damage radius exceeding the terms set forth in the submitted fall letter, uh, applicants shall be responsible for damage to any adjacent properties impacted by tower collapse or, or damage. Uh, with those conditions in mind, um, again, I'm recommending approval and I'll open it up for, <coughs> for questions. As a reminder, we do have the uh, public hearing component as well. <laughs> Way Park Planning Commission hold a public hearing at City Hall, 19 13th Avenue North, 6.30 or soon thereafter, Tuesday, September 11th, 2018, to hear the following request. Request of Buell Consulting, Inc. and try to con County Properties, LLC, for conditional use permit to allow for a 150-foot monopole telecommunication tower in a I-1 light industrial district. The property is illegally described as lots 11, 12, block 1, Sundial West Industrial Park. The property 
His address is 633 Prosper Drive, Way Park, Minnesota, 56387. You are welcome to attend the public hearing or submit written comments. Public hearing opened at 641. Commissioners got any questions or anybody? Petitioners want to come up and speak about it or have John cover most of it? Um, hi, my name is Eddie Buell. I'm with Buell Consulting. Uh, we are working with Ecosite, um, who will be the tower um, owner on this property. Um, just want to let you know I'm here to answer any additional questions that may have come up. Um, I believe Director Nuremberg kind of covered everything, um, but any additional questions I'm happy to ask or address. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Anybody from the public want to speak for or against or? I move we close the public hearing. I'll second that. I got a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor, sing by saying aye. 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 <coughs> public hearing closed at 642. <coughs> Commissioners, you got anything to discuss? Seems pretty straightforward. Chair, I would make a motion to um, close the public hearing, don't we? Try to close it. Okay. I would make a motion to <coughs> recommend approval of the proposal as directed and uh, with the conditions as stated. I'll second that. We got a motion and a second to approve with the conditions set forth. All in favor, signal by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. same sign. Just <coughs> with all present. Again, we expect that item to go to the City Council next Monday, September 17th at 6.30 p.m. for final review. Agenda item number six. Give the background, John. Sure. Uh, this is a preliminary and final plat, res uh, plat review of YRC edition. Uh, on your screen, uh, you, you'll have the, the general location uh, of the uh, subject property on Old Highway Road North, uh, um, just off of Highway 23 and one of the, the newer areas of the city, formerly St. Joseph Township. Um, I'd add that the road probably looks nicer now than it does on that photo, even though it's a pretty recent photo. Uh, the request has been submitted by Anderson Trucking Service, Inc. and uh, Peters Real Estate and Development, uh, coordinating on uh, Planning a portion of this property um, with the intent of uh, preparing it for development of a, a small uh, freight terminal use. Uh, this is a, a currently vacant property in a zoned I-1 light industrial. Um, industrial uses are located adjacent in the form of the ADM facility, Pomps Tire, and the uh, Warning Lakes facility to the uh, northeast here on, on that stretch of Old Highway Road North. Um, there have been sections of this property that were previously platted. This isn't going to show up very well, but you can look at it on the angle here. Uh, you can see portions that were previously platted, um, but the, the portion that uh, they're looking at has not been previously platted, and we require that the platting occur prior to any construction or development, so that's what's triggering this. Um, particular plat. Uh, this is a single lot, single block uh, arrangement, so about as simple as it gets. Um, the applicants will likely come back at some time in the future to, to further 
plat the area as um, more end users are identified. But for right now, this is uh, the best approach for everybody. The, the lot block is uh, 5.25 acres uh, in total. Um, the property will continue to access um, Belclair Drive via the old Highway Road North. Uh, as I alluded to, this was recently upgraded um, by the city after um, a long time of neglect. Um, the applicants have been coordinating with uh, city staff on their preliminary development plans, um, and we've had several meetings um, um, with different folks involved and uh, just recently sat down with everybody at the table to kind of go through things um, as we move forward. Uh, but everything is pr progressing well there. That ac that actual development won't need any um, planning commission or city council review or approval, at least in its current design or configuration. <coughs> um, it, it as of right now, it's meeting all the standards and everything, so nothing special is required as far as approvals. Just standard um, building permit and um, standard review processes. Uh, one component that we um, we see with new plats of, uh, for first time plats of properties is the, the payment in lieu for parkland dedication. Um, calculating that based on the portion of that parcel that's being uh, platted um, from the, the current 11.18 acres um, and taking 5% of that value as established by the assessor's office. Uh, comes out to an estimated payment in lieu of parkland dedication of uh, in the amount of eleven thousand four hundred twenty dollars, um, and the the park board has weighed in on that and, and found that to be an acceptable amount, and that will be included as um, part of the recommendation to the city council for their review as well. I don't see any major any real concerns with the plat. I mean, it's it's again uh, about as straightforward as it gets, um, but. We do have to go through the, the proper process here, and um, it is nice to see some development taking place out there. These, these properties are kind of ripe for that sort of an industrial development, and we've been looking at <coughs> thing, different things for a while, so this is a good fit for there. Um, I would recommend uh, <coughs> approval of the, the preliminary plat with the following conditions. Um, number one, development upon the property may be subject to a standard development agreement with the city if deemed necessary. And number two, uh, property is subject to a requirement for the payment in lieu of parkland dedication uh, as recommended by park board and established by the city council. Any required parkland dedication fees must be paid prior to affixing of city signatures upon the plat. And uh, provided that those two conditions of the preliminary plat are satisfied, I'd also recommend approval of the final plat. That concludes my report and <coughs> open it up for any, any questions in public hearing. Yes, sir. Got a question, John. Can we go back to that original picture we had of the, the yep. outline of the property? Yep, I can pull that back up here. Okay, is the, uh, the area to the, uh, I guess it would be east, uh, is that also Anderson property? It, 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 the line butts up tight against that building. Yes, yeah, that, that, is, that is currently Anderson Anderson property as well, so, we to the have, best of my knowledge at least. Do we have to require a little, some setback from that building for this particular property? I mean, wouldn't that be prudent? Well, this is this is only taking a, a section of this overall parcel. They're, go, they're going to maintain the area basically in between. This is splitting off maybe half of what you see in outlined in blue. Why do we have the whole area of blue outlined? Be that's, 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 the, that's the 11 the, acres? That's the existing parcel. Okay. Yep, I'll, I'll move to the next screen. You can see okay. kind of what, what's taking off so, of that. So actually nothing is being done. I mean, no division isn't being made up at, up against that building. No, here on, on this screen, and I apologize that it's, it, kind of sneaked away on me and rotated, but here you can see the, the building outline. Okay. And then the the, the thick line uh, square to the, okay, what would be to the top of this page, but actually to the south is the area being platted. Okay. And I'll, I'll make a note as well. You see that the uh, there's a vacated road listed on here. Correct. We are <coughs> doing that separately. Uh, that's not something that the, the planning, commi planning commission has any 
purview on, but that's going to the city council on Monday as well. Um, that that vacated a road, we, we were kind of unable to tell if it had ever been properly vacated. Uh, it, it appears not that there was some construction over it um, many, many years ago, but we're, we're going to take the opportunity now while it presents itself to, to formally vacate that and, and make sure it's done properly. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm just, uh, what, what is a freight terminal? Uh, it's, think of like a, like a, a trucking hub where uh, items are coming in and, and kind of being uh, offloaded or, or unloaded like a, a FedEx or a UPS are probably the two, two most common people mm -hmm. think of. Um, we have we have a couple in town, and they yeah, no, no, just okay. Just uh, um, so, and I can let the applicants may be able to speak more okay. properly to that if they'd like. Way Park Planning Commission will hold a public hearing at City Hall, nineteen thirteenth Avenue North, at six thirty or soon thereafter, Tuesday, September eleventh, twenty eighteen, to hear the following request. Request of Peters Real Estate and Development and Anderson Trucking Service Incorporated for review of preliminary and final plat of YRC addition. The property is legally described as that part of Alt Lot B, Lot 8, Lot 15, and that part of Vacated Road all being in the plot of Delano Acres according to the recorded plat thereof and that part of the northwest quarter of the northeast quarter of the section 26 and part of the northwest quarter of the no northwest quarter of section 25, all being in township 125, range 29 west, Stearns County, Minnesota. All are welcome to attend and submit written comments. Public hearing opened at 6.52. Anybody have any comments or? My name is Tara O'Neill and I reside at 2583 86th Avenue adjacent to the property there. Um, I'm here just with concerns because I've gotten nailed from ADM on conditional use permits that haven't been followed. Um, not because of Waite Park, because of the St. Joe Waite Park issues. Uh, I just have a few questions um, about this. Um, number one, freight terminal. Okay, we deal with trucks and trains right now. We're trying to get some of that taken care of. What are the hours that they can be having trucks come in there and load and unload with the banging and the clanging and the beeping of the different machines and the trucks backing up into the bays? Well, That's question one. Do you want to continue with your questions or would you prefer to oh, I'll take, take them one point at a time. point? Yeah, that would be best. Uh, number one, this isn't a conditional use permit request. We're just platting the property. Okay. Um, so we're not putting any conditions on the business specifically. Yep. Uh, freight terminals are uh, considered a permitted use in industrial districts, which this is zoned. So there, it does okay. not need special permission to operate, provided that it um, that they're not seeking any any variance or anything above or beyond the the um, existing ordinance standards, which at, at this time at least in their pre-designs, they're, they're meeting. Uh, and I can allow the applicants to speak to their, their intended hours, but um, we go more by the, the noise standards as far as any overnight noise, but we don't necessarily set um, specific hours that they, that they can operate within or of that nature, we can we can do that with a conditional use permit. But again, this is something that does not require a conditional use permit. So perhaps those questions might be better directed to the applicant as to what their intended hours okay. are. I'm just you know very cautious because right now we're dealing with trucks sitting out right beside our window, running on ADM's property all night long. Um, we can't sleep with our windows open. They're not supposed to be there, um, but that's happening. The trains that's an issue we're dealing with ourselves. So we're just very cautious about. Um, noise. I mean, our place is residential. There's a lot of residential places around there um, that are butted up against this. Uh, we're not opposed to things like this coming in, as long as there's some respect for the homeowners. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's something we're very 
um, curious about are the hours because right now we hear the beeping up at Palms. You know, they're not open in the middle of the night, thank God, but um, we can hear that from our place. So with this place even closer and um, right on the corner, that's something we'll be able to hear. Um, so that is a, a very big concern of ours is some of the noise issues. Um, the other concern is um, freight direction. I mean, is that something to ask them also? Are they going to be coming you know, going north, they're going to be going right out to the highway for the most part because that's probably the best route. Um, yeah, I don't know. Can you guys probably can't answer that again? That's I, I can't. Okay. I would let the applicants work. Okay. That's not something that that is a component of okay. of this sort of review. So if the applicants okay. are willing and able to speak to that, yep. we okay. can welcome them to, to do like so. Like I said, I might be early on this, but I, I've learned in, from the past. I want to get ahead of this. Um, my last question is, is there a drawing of where the building's going to be at? Um, are the trucks going to be on the east side of the building that's going to be a little more shielded from the residents so the noise isn't heard or anything? Do you guys have plat of a picture or anything like that or building layout? We, we've we seen that from the applicant, but we typically don't include those sorts of layouts with the with the plat process because it's at, at this time it's not finalized and they may still be, still be going through some form of negotiations okay. with the um, with the owners and between the owners and developers if okay. they have that or they're willing to for us to share that I'd be happy to do so but um, they may have that with them at this time I can't speak to that yeah okay it's just some of the questions that come up I want to make sure that they do get covered at some point um, so you're telling me the best way to take care of my questions is just talk specifically with those guys and well either not e you guys or the city council e either the city council isn't likely to, ha to have any input on the business directly. If it's a if it's a permitted use, they can um, continue through their development process and obtain building permits. You're welcome to continue to uh, speak with me, and we can coordinate with the developers here. They may be able to answer some of your questions right here, right now, okay. and they, they're certainly welcome to do so. Uh, otherwise, I'd recommend we just kind of stay in touch on, on those items. I've just learned with the ADM, ADM issue, talking to them outside of anything that's legal, it's all under the carpet, and it was never said, never promised, never nothing, unless it was said in front of somebody. So I want to make sure that these concerns are taken care of, not just talking with the people outside off yeah, the record. Yeah, and, and I can appreciate your concerns. and. Okay. Um, and Great. you're probably aware that uh, the ADM facility uh, kind of occurred in such a way and in, in such a place that wasn't uh, maybe to the city's liking as well, but mm -hmm. we have to deal with it. And, we're, and I can, we're trying I can, to work with them. I can mention as an aside that it's on our radar as well. Um, I've been in touch with another resident on your stretch, and um, we're formulating a game plan, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. But right now we're because we're getting into harvest season, we're, we're gonna be looking at some perhaps measurements of uh, uh, yeah. noise levels and some of those things and seeing we if there's any We can talk about ADM course. some other time. I don't yeah. take up their time. But I, time, I, just, so. I just wanted to let you know that. <laughs> you let me know, I'll, I'll be here. All yep. right, thank you. Um, from the developer that wanna speak or? Dave Peters and with Peters Real Estate and Development. <clears throat> we are working with the, the buyer of the property to develop the site. Uh, we do have a proposed building location uh, in reference to Commissioner Blair question. It's going to be a cross dock facility. You're going to have docks on one side, docks on the other side, and then on the end, you'd load trucks in, separate out, and go from there. Uh, at present, the, the user is planning on using as much of the site as they need. Uh, there is, they have budgeted in an expansion and we've um, designed for expansion. If in the future they want to expand, that'd be great. If not, uh, they can just continue with what we have proposed. Are there any other questions? Dave, were, did you have any comment on the uh, projected hours of operation for Miss O'Neill, or is it perhaps too early to tell? I, I do I do not know. 
uh, our function is developer, so we develop the property and lease it to the tenant. Uh, they're a trucking company. Um, my understanding is there's not backup beepers on semi trucks, uh, but there would likely be trucks going in and out of there. Uh, I would guess at all. I do not know. Oh, help me to understand this then. When is this? going to be basically a facility where you're um, leaving the trailers like overnight where you're switching drivers or something like that you're not actually keeping mm -hmm. stuff there and, uh, and and loading and unloading the trailers themselves well right? it's probably a little of, a little of both um, there are going to be some trucks and trailers that are kept on site there but what typically in a cross dock what you do is you bring freight in and then you repackage it to the trucks that are going to those locations. And so you'd be bringing the trucks in, they'd unload into the facility, and then the trucks going in opposite directions would be loaded with that and sent out from there. So. Okay, well thank you. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Anybody else have any <coughs> comments? Any concerns they want to bring up? I move we close the public hearing. <coughs> second that. We got a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor of signing by aye. 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 Public hearing closed at 702. And again, this item we expect uh, along with its, the vacation request on that portion of the kind of interior uh, platted roadway on portion there. Um, we'll be looking at this at the city council meeting on Monday the 17th as well for anyone interested. Commissioners, any discussion? Uh, it, so I'm understanding this facility will, op will operate 24 hours a day. Can anyone answer that? I, I, I just want to make a comment. Um, you know, we would have to address the um, the operations of the facility through other ordinances. Okay. I mean, I, I don't want to get beyond the scope of what we're looking at That's here, which is kind of specifically right. the plat. Okay. But we do have. Um, yep, I got it. I'm we had noise just to allay concerns. We do have noise <coughs> ordinance limitations that um, we can utilize for. Um, you know, I don't want to say problem properties, but properties that have concerns with with any kind of overnight issues. I mean, this is what we get when we have properties that were developed kind of haphazardly when they were in the township, thanks to things like ADM and. Some of those things, you know, we, we have to work around them to the best best we can now. Any other questions or can I get a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, will the preliminary and final plat be considered together or separately? Want them separately, John, or? Uh, together is fine. Well, I will move that we recommend a, a approval on this preliminary and final plat of the uh, YRC addition with the uh, two conditions as stated. I would second that. I got a motion and a second to approve with conditions. All in favor, signify by saying aye. <coughs> aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Passed with all present. Any other business? I don't have anything additional for this evening. I get a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. I got a motion and a second to adjourn. All favor signal saying aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned, 705.